Welcome to Blue Channel. Waterfalls. Here. You want direct here? Yep. Sure. This is my food now. So you saw campsite number one, and here we are at campsite number two. Dinner is on its way. Clothesline set up with this new system I've been using lately. Instead of making a tripod, I just have one stick coming out of the ground. Let's just see, I'll just zoom in here so you can see how it's supported. So the lanyard on my hydration sack is wrapped around the rope. Uh, wrapped around the clothesline and the pole which gives it all stability and there's the Sawyer Mini dripping away all connected to the totem pole hanging system so just one piece of wood no need for a tripod anymore I prefer the system I think it's uh, more effective it takes up less space around the campsite too so there's my backpack Still using the same old water bucket that we have used for many years. Last thing I wanted to show you at this campsite is over here. I am drying my woolen jumper. So you hear a lot of people saying that, oh, you know, wool is too slow to dry, but it's too heavy to carry. But you just got to keep it dry. That's it, man. So it's almost dry now. It's been hanging on the on the backpack all day. Just the wrist collar on one arm is a bit wet. Just using this undercover area here to dry everything at this designated campground. And this is our water supply for tonight. Untreated rainwater, do not drink.
Look how muddy that water is. Brown in colour. Mm. So I wouldn't run this water through the um, Sawyer Mini, but that's why we carry this pump filter, just for really dirty water. Let's see what happens here. Coming out a little bit discoloured at first. <laughs> What is the day city? Definitely, definitely a bit of weird taste coming out of this water. What is the taste? What is it? <laughs> How would I explain it? Kind of like water out of a really old tap. There must be a tannin in this water, chemicals off the trees, I think. Kind of rushed it a bit, but the actual pre-filter was touching the bottom uh, of the creek bank, so that could be one reason why it was so hard to pump. Oh. Definitely not preferred dream water. Better than going first thirsty though. Second river crossing canvas. Pretty deep. So with river crossing sometimes it's best to just remain calm. Walk up and down stream a little bit. You might find an easier spot. I've got a feeling that we have noticed in the distance it looks like there's a slightly shallower spot further downstream. The sea is that way. Here we go. shallower here but a huge embankment behind this crossing Looks like we've found a spot that might only be just above ankle depth, but we will be getting our feet wet.
So at high tide, the water would be, the waves would be way back here. It'd be much deeper. Just after 3.30 p.m. on the dot. So we crossed that inland river at the lowest tide point. Possibly for the last five days, actually. It's a, that website I mentioned before, uh, Tide Willy, even gives you an estimate of the, the level of tide. Is it a really low tide or a really, really high tide? Woo. We'll arrive at the campsite soon. We did it! We did it, sweetie. Campsite number three. Nice and out of the wind here. We chose this spot because it's slightly downhill from that cliff edge. Same old setup. Totem pole with the string line going through there, the clothesline. Got me sleeping bag hanging up to dry. Bit of, couple of other bits of gear. One new piece of equipment I've been using recently is the Oakley Batwolf Prism Dailies. I'm a big fan of the Oakley Batwolfs. This is their latest and best lens, the Prism Daily, polarized lens. Still using the Silky Gomataro 300 saw there. There's the new hat hanging up. Haven't tied down the guy lines yet, so this is what the tent looks like when the ropes aren't tied down. Got the gas cans completely buried all the way down from there. So the best thing about that, about that is minimizes the wind problem with the, the flamage. Just show you the base of the totem pole. There's a digging trowel and I always bury the base, uh, the bottom of the totem pole about 10 inches deep or sometimes 12 inches deep. And the same old thing, that's the hydration line going up to the Sawyer Mini and then connected to the 10 litre MSR dromedary. I really like this totem pole setup, man. Even my backpack can hang there. So I reckon right now I've got probably, including the water, I reckon almost 15 kilos of weight just hanging from the top of that totem pole. There's the lanyards of the backpack and the hydration sack, again, just wrapped around the clothesline, all my socks and woolen thermals hanging up. And the other end of that rope is tied to that tree there. It's the knot I use, just a simple overhand loop wrapped around, strung through. Same thing at the other end. And one knot I'm using in the middle I've used another overhand loop, but I've actually put a stick through the knot. And that's because there's a lot of tension on this section where I've joined the two different string lines. See, there's one rope and then another rope joining. Uh, I put the stick there, that's so in the morning, it's very, very easy to undo the knot. I just pull that stick out and everything comes loose. Just have a look, another look here, this end. As you can see, same type of knot wrapped around that tree camera might pick it up you've got a few ants running around over there and this is bush channel signing off on another multi-day camp we hope to bring more coastal camping coastal hiking trips to you soon happy camping <laughs>